Good morning, New Life Church. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> We're having fun here today. We are, y'all don't know. <laughs> well, first of all, if you don't know me, I who are I, you? <laughs> I am Caroline Jones, but I have to introduce to you what we call an OG. <laughs> if for those that don't know, he's an original. Um, Oh, good say your morning. Name. Good morning and happy Sunday, everyone. My name is Stephen Whedon. Yes. I guess I'm an OG. Yes, he is. Stephen was like one of the originals when it came to um, Eli. Eli. Yeah. He taught me a couple of things. And she got it. Loving the camera, yeah. but more so, show my heart through it yes. to you guys. So, anyway, I'm excited. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't been a this is good. It's good. But, guys, happy Sunday. We are finally having an outstandingly beautiful Sunday here in Ohio. It's been raining for almost two weeks. I thought we were going to have to build an ark in Poland, Ohio, but we are good. Wait, I, someone <laughs> I was talking to them, and they're like, oh yeah, I'm sitting on the back porch looking at a lake. And I'm like, like a lake? Where are you at? They were like, no, all the water <laughs> and my grass. Sure. I said, oh, my bad. Yeah. So yeah, so those that have a lake, <laughs> we, the sun will dry right. Sorry, the sun is going to dry it up. Yeah, but, today, in yeah. the name of Jesus. If you first time visitors please please let us know we have um chat hosts that are dropping things in so you can sign up um so they can connect mm -hmm. with you being part of yeah. your life and connecting what is that uh i mean where Other should we Jesus. start i mean well it starts with a free coffee cup first yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but i mean um pastor davis is, is preaching about that today get yeah. in the game and part two um, so find out more, obviously, as you stay tuned. But I mean, yeah. the, the more you are in connected, the more you get involved in Christ. And guys, if one thing, if you are watching from home, please go ahead, share this experience. Don't have church alone, even though you might be sitting on the couch by yourself with your cat, which I love. Not with share the cat. Share this experience <laughs> because join in, join in the comments, have church with someone. It's going to yeah. be a great Sunday. And it's a great time also to subscribe. Yeah. If you use YouTube, please subscribe. You'll get to know when new messages yep. are being dropped. Um, you get to stay connected with us. But also, it allows us to know who's following mm -hmm. us. And so that's a beautiful thing because then we get to tell other people yeah. who we're connecting with and encourage actually you guys to come. Yeah. And speaking of connecting, we're having a missions trip coming up. Zambia. Wait, wait, wait sorry. I got <laughs> we are the whistle. That's because everyone, like Stephen said earlier, is downstairs looking at all the different teams and ways to connect a new life. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, I got a little distracted by little squirrel. <laughs> so, but with Zambia, they yeah. leave tomorrow. Yeah. So we have a whole through the twenty fifth. Yeah. Zambia, Africa. Africa, and so where they um, are building partnership with the other. Yeah. Where um, they um, help to. Um, Churches um, raised. Uh, when I say we, new life raised money for what? You. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> See why I love him. And so it's one of those things. So they travel out today. They come yeah. back on the trip. Yeah. We want to keep them in prayer. We don't just reach, locally, but we go to the ends of the world. All to yeah. the end. But that's what Christ asked yeah. for us to do. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. I couldn't do it. God bless them. <laughs> I'm <laughs> for that, but like, gotta keep my hair. <laughs> You were in the military. You, mm -mm, I'm good. I'm like, nope. nope. I, I had to do it then. Now, yeah. I don't know. I need a... a but anyway, yeah. I, I'll lose track. <laughs> hey, but guys, if you are looking to get involved, maybe you're new, maybe you've been here for 50 years and are looking to get plugged in, Discover New Life is coming up April yeah. 17th here at 7 p.m. It's incredible. We've all been through it. The yes. vision has been cast. Um, it's a time to connect too with yeah. Pastor Dave to Which see a lot his of, heart. A lot of churches, you don't have that one-on-one -on -one time with your pastor. You never know. Actually, you don't ever. Yeah. Well, I don't want to say ever, but it's not. It's not a common. No. Actually, see him um, truly open up what he thinks of, um, about the purpose in new life and yeah. how he actually feels about yeah. all his congregation, everybody. And then after the Discover class comes the Fit class, because mm -hmm. with the Fit class, it kind of starts to show like how. I'm actually wired how am mm -hmm. i built and then how are other people wired and built and how do we yeah. connect together in the entire body um josh does through a personality profiling yeah and us to know a little bit more about ourselves and then water baptisms on the 21st you get dunked. <laughs> i've been dunked no i feel like i probably needed it <laughs> 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 yeah 
coffee. But, but no. Oh, wow. Um, guys, stand to your sure. feet. Put that coffee down. Grab those journals in your Bible. We are about to head down to the sanctuary and get ready for worship. We'll see you in the sanctuary soon. Bye, guys. Love y'all. Oh, wait. Did I do a kiss? Jehovah. Jehovah. Come on. Jehovah, 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 come on, shout his name this morning. He's been too good to us. Shout his name, Jehovah, oh, Jehovah. Put those hands. Let's boast about our God this morning. He is Jehovah. He shames every idol. He reigns with our rival. He goes by the name of Jehovah. To nothing and darkness goes running. He goes by the name of Jehovah. Jehovah. Somebody say, call the name. 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 Fighting for Zion. He's fighting for Zion. Oh, oh, oh. There's no other God. Like Jehovah. 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 His eyes never tired. His eyes never tired. Yeah. His eyes are like fire. His eyes are like fire. All our prayer, all our praise, all our praise, all our praise, yeah. all our praise, to our praise, all 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 our praise, come on. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Come on, I want to hear you say it. Come on, new life, say Jehovah Nisi. Come on, new life, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Rapha, yeah. heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Jehovah Nisi fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh meet your needs. Jehovah Jireh meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Rapha heal your body. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Jehovah Shalom be your peace. Jehovah Nisi fight your battle. Jehovah Nisi fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. 
Somebody say, call the name. 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 Jehovah. Jehovah. All our praise. 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 Belongs to Him. Belongs to Him. Say, call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Yeah. Call the name. Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Jireh, meet yeah. your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be a peace. Jehovah Shalom, be a peace. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, fight your battle. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal, heal, Jehovah heal, Rapha, heal, 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 heal. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Shalom, yeah. be your peace. Jehovah Nisi, fight. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah fight Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Rapha, heal your hey. body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Shalom, be your oh, peace. We say, call the name. Call the name. Oh, oh, oh. Call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Je- 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 Jehovah. All our prayers. 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 Be the last to him. Say, call the name, 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 Jehovah, Jehovah, all our praise, 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 all Come on, all our praise. He deserves all our praise. Think about what he's done in your life. Think about what he's going to do in your life. He deserves all our praise. See, the enemy wants you to not praise because he knows what's coming. He sees your destiny. He sees your future. So when the song says all our praise, everything that's within our bodies, everything that's within our, within our spirits, the Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Oh, Jehovah Nisi, fight my battles. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh meets your need. Yeah. Jehovah Rapha, heal my body when I'm hurting. Jehovah Shalom, be my peace. Oh, just sing that. Jehovah Nisi, fight your battles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jehovah Jireh, meet your need. Yeah. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Come on, just a wave offering this morning. Come on, Jehovah Nisi. Let's give him all our praise. Jehovah Jireh. Hey, Jehovah Rapha. Hey, Jehovah Shalom. Come on, church. Oh, Jehovah Nisi. Yeah, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Jireh, meet your needs. Hey, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha, heal your body. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. Jehovah Shalom, be your peace. One last peace. time. We sing, call the name. Call the name. Call the name. Jehovah. All our praise. Oh, all our praise. Belongs to him. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, we just ask you to move in this place. Just bring your presence into this place as we sing this next song. Just ask. 
and your children. Woo! God, we just welcome you into this place. We know that you can move mountains. We know that you can raise dead people from the grave. We know that you can heal cancer. We know that you can heal diabetes, God. We just welcome you into this place. We ask you to move right now. Fill our hearts with your presence and just move. Just praise him as we sing this next song.
I want everybody in this building to lock arms with somebody that's next to you. Just stay right there. We're going we're gonna to continue to worship. That's all right. Just stay right down there. Just lock arms with somebody. Come here, Mark. Come here. We're going to go back into that in just a moment. But there, listen, we're not just singing songs, church. We're releasing a sound in the atmosphere. And the sound that we are releasing is is a praise noise that breaks things. I don't know if you understand that or not, but we don't just sing songs. We break atmospheres with our praise. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. But all over this room today, there are people that need a touch in their bodies. A touch in their minds some of you have a tormenting spirit bound by the spirit of fear anxiety others of you you're dealing with some type of tumor in your body or some type of back problem or some type of, 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 of disease that you're dealing with and I believe as we release the sound we break things in the atmosphere you may not understand that but just receive that So I'm going to ask Mark today to speak over this crowd today a healing word. And I just want you to receive whatever we pray from this platform because it's coming to you now in the name of Jesus. Mark, minister. Thank you, Pastor. Well, I'm a demonstration of a miracle because I had back issues that had surgery that didn't work. We're supposed to have surgery last week and I canceled it. If it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Not tomorrow, not in a week, this day, this day. It's not because of anything I did. It's because of his love, his mercy, his grace. Let's let's make one thing clear. He's the healer. He's the healer. So we say, come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Like a rushing river. Lord, the winds of change blow through this place, sweep through this house. The people online. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, We come before you as a gracious people. We thank you for who you are and whose we are. And we believe by faith that you do move mountains. And you still heal today when you walked this earth and you ministered and you said to the blind man, be healed and he saw. If anyone's having issues with vision, cataracts, retinal issues. Jesus said, be healed. And he saw. He said to the lame man, the crippled man on his mat, if anyone here is struggling with arthritis, hip issues, spina bifida, he said to the man, pick up your mat and walk. And he did. That's for you. That's for you. The demon possessed, he cast out the devils in the name of Jesus. If you're being tormented, if you can't sleep, if you have anxiety, that's of the devil. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus came to give life. He came to give freedom. Today's your day. Today's your day. Because of Calvary's cross, 
We are victors. We're overcomers. Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, touch. Touch lives. Heal them. Freedom. Victory. 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 We bow down to you, Lord. We are grateful and we are thankful for what you're doing right now. Minister. Minister to your people as we minister to you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is coming. Sing it out. Miracles happen when you move. Healing is coming.
Shoulders. We're 
give you glory in this house thank you for your presence where would we be without your presence Lord we would be nothing more than a social club just a gathering of people singing a bunch of songs but I thank you God that in the song that we sing we find you and your presence comes and settles in on the house so we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. With hands lifted, we worship you. Give you praise and glory and honor, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing this with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Us. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain oh Jesus 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim will all pass away but there's something about that day Hallelujah Release the sound of praise. Release the sound of worship in the house. Sing out with the angels. Bless his name. Woo! We worship you, Lord. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's chase the devil out of here. Come on. Hallelujah. Healing is coming. Healing is coming. Healing is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Somebody's on the verge of victory today. Somebody's about to break through. Jesus Hallelujah Oh we praise you Lord Give you the glory and honor and praise My, 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 my Glory be to God Glory be to God Oh, Jesus, 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 we want your presence more than we want our breath. 
We need you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands all over the building this morning. Thank you, Jesus. God, I praise you today. Thank you for the glory of the Lord. We know that on this side of heaven, we have just a glimpse of an atmosphere that we will be in throughout all eternity. But we thank you for a glimpse of the glory of God. We thank you, Jesus. I want our Zambia team to come and stand right down front today. Would you do that? Come on, let's just maintain this atmosphere of worship. Come on, Zambia team, just stand right down front. We want to pray over you. We have, I believe, nine people that are going to Zambia. Is it tomorrow? You're leaving tomorrow. So we want to pray over you. Ask God to use you. I'm jealous because I don't get to go this time. But you'll make it without me. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for willing vessels. Yeah, let's lay hands on them. Willing vessels. Thank you that these hands are prepared to do the work of the Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for a special anointing on their lives in a foreign land to accomplish the will and the purpose of our God to build tabernacles, to bring water wells, most of all to bring the living water to a land that so desperately needs the rivers of living water to flow through it I pray Father God for your special anointing and touch for this Zambia team as they leave may every need be met in their life in their family's life I pray protection over them Lord God I pray that the Spirit of God that lives on the inside of them would rise up in a mighty way. May they experience an anointing to function in a way that they have never functioned in before. May the voice of the Lord speak to them, Lord, in ways they've never heard before. Divine wisdom and counsel come to them in ways they've never experienced before. Change lives by using them and then use lives to change them. Thank you for laborers in the harvest field. We pray for this entire Zambia team, the Spirit of the Lord, to anoint them and use them for the purposes of God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Father, as we're agreeing in prayer this morning, we pray for Israel today. We bless the nation of Israel. Father, you said to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for those that love Jerusalem will prosper. We're not so concerned about our prosperity, but we are concerned about the prosperity and the success of Israel. God, we pray for the apple of your eye today. Israel for you said whoever touches the apple of my eye touches me and God we know that you who watch over Israel you neither sleep nor slumber so you are very aware of what's happening in the demonic realm right now you know the evil and the evil thoughts of a tyrant, dictator in Iran that threatens the peace of Jerusalem. 
right here in Poland, Ohio, we pray that the angels of hosts, the angels of the Lord, that they would go forth and be released in the atmosphere to stay back the attack of the enemy and that somehow, some way, peace would come to the region even because we, the people of God, have prayed and believed. Yahweh, you are Lord. The government rests on your shoulders, Jesus. And we thank you today that you are in control. Lord, as we watched the news last night, we saw the leaves on the fig tree begin to blossom even more. So we pray that you would help us to be ready as the people of God. Be prepared. For Christ could come at any moment. Lord, we give you the glory and the honor and the praise for what you're about to do in this service today. And we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! He's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy, we'll welcome His returning. It may be morn. It may be night or noon. But we know He's coming soon. I just lost about three quarters of the crowd. But does anybody believe it? He's coming soon. He's coming soon. With joy, we'll welcome His returning. It may be morn. It may be night or noon. But we know, right, Carol? He's coming soon. Amen. Well, good morning. At this time, if you are in our junior high ministry, you are released, our fifth through eighth grade. At this time, you could head out to the lobby. We have something for you. If you would put your attention on the screens, we have a short video for you this morning. Hello. Hello. Welcome to New Life Church, where we exist to love God and lead people to live a better story. If today is your first time here, you are our VIP. Be sure to fill out a connect card located on the pew in front of you or online. Don't forget to drop it in one of our giving boxes located near the doors. After our worship experience, pick up your free gift near the VIP wall in the foyer. While you're here, make sure you check in on the Church Center app. To stay connected wherever you are, you can visit newlifepoland.com. Again, we are so glad to have you here at New Life Church. Thank you for being here this morning. Maybe this is your first Sunday. Maybe you've been here for a few weeks. We have a class that we call Discover that is going to be happening April 17th. There's a QR code up on the screen. Pull out your phone with your camera and scan that. It'll take you to our uh, Church Center app, and you'll be able to sign up for that. It is this coming week. It is a class that tells you all about the vision, the mission, the values of New Life Church. Our very own Pastor Dave teaches that class. You'll get to meet him and get to know him. So if you say, what is my next step? Maybe I'm new here. Maybe I've been sitting in a pew, and I want to hear a little bit more about New Life Church. This is your opportunity. You can sign up on the Church Center app. Wonderful. Well, April 21st, we have an opportunity where we're going to celebrate with baptism. Baptism is such a special moment because it's that interchange that we make where we get to make that outward declaration. We get to show and come together what the Lord is doing in our lives. It's when we go under and we wash off that old sinful way and come up new in the Lord. So if this is something that's stirring in you and you want to partake in water baptisms, I encourage you to scan the QR code or you can 
go onto the Church Center app and you can register to be a part of that service. So some of you may be wondering this morning, what's up these referees doing at church today? They, they got these whistles on and all, all these signs in the lobby. Today, uh, we're talking about Teams Sunday. Get in the game. Look at your neighbor and say, get in the game. Get in the game. Get in the game. And so, right, so I hear the whistles going. Penalty. The Browns are not going to the Super Bowl. The referee has spoken. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. But we are excited that here at this church, we have volunteers who make this thing happen day in and day out. Right? And if you are not on a volunteer team, if you are not serving, we want you to get into the game. And so if you go right out to the tables after service, there's people out there with shirts on that say get in the game and jerseys. And they'll be able to direct you to areas that you can take your next step and get in the game and start being a part of the, uh, the life of the church and serving. There's so many areas that you can serve here at New Life Church. So go out to the lobby after service, check out those teams, uh, and we would love to see you become a part. Yeah. And this next announcement is super exciting, super special, as we, our family, is sending two to El Salvador this summer. So you've seen a lot going on in the lobby today. We've got so much opportunity today. But our El Salvador team is going to be preparing lunch to go. We've been able to do some pre-orders online during the week this week, and we're already at 100 pre-orders. So thank you for all that support. But we're not done. So if that's something that's exciting to you and you want to grab a lunch on your way out, we encourage you to join us in the lobby. We're selling hot sausage sandwiches. We've got chips, a drink, and a cookie. This is all for just $10. And proceeds are going to go over to our El Salvador team. A couple things to know. If you did pre-order, you're going to go down towards the kitchen. You're going to find a table, and they're going to serve you there. If you ordered before service, we're going to meet you right in the lobby and get your lunch ready for you. And if this is something new and you're saying, hey, I want to grab a lunch, come meet us in the lobby, and we'll get one packed up for you. Amen. Aren't you glad to see us sending a Zambia team and hearing about we're sending teenagers yes. to El Salvador? Yes. With yes. that being said, we're going to transition to a moment to give into our offering this morning. You know, I'm glad that I'm part of a church that is sending people around the world to preach the gospel. When you give into your, into your offering every week, when you sow those seeds, when you give your finances, when you give into missions, when you give your tithes and your offerings, we're not just sitting on a pot of money. We're doing something with it, right? I mean, the, the kingdom of God does not need your money. But God chooses to use people, and he chooses to use our resources. I mean, every dollar that you get in your paycheck comes from him. And I'm glad that I'm part of a church that is investing in sowing, sending missions teams around the world, and we're sending teenagers who have life-changing experiences in another country. We're doing all kinds of things. We do God's warehouse. We have so many ministries that are, that are benefiting from you sowing seed into the offering. So with that being said, if you have your offering this morning, maybe you got your phone, maybe you give by, by your smartphone, maybe you have your, your envelope there, would you just lift that up this morning? And we're going to pray and bless the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that this is a church that is a sending church, that this is a church that is advancing the kingdom through tithes and offerings and the giving that you give us. Father, thank you that you have made us generous stewards of these finances. Would they go to further your kingdom and your purposes? And would you bless each and every giver this morning? In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Can we welcome up Pastor Dave this morning? Hey, all right, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Last week, we started a sermon series called Get in the Game. <laughs> I just had to do that. All right. Get in the game. So here's what we've been talking about. Every one of us come to Christ at different stages of our life from different backgrounds, different environments, and so forth. Here's what we shared with you last week. It was very simple. We said that we come to Christ or we relate to the church through um, perhaps community, and then we come in to the crowd, and then into the congregation, then into the committed, and then into the core. So community, crowd, congregation, committed, core. And we used a, a baseball analogy 
to talk about those things, basically like running the bases in a baseball game. And we're all at different stages in our spiritual journey. But one of the points that we made is this. Following Jesus requires us to take a step and to make sacrifices. That's what we said. It was as simple as that. Following Jesus requires us to simply take another step. Notice I didn't say leap or jump. Because hardly anybody that I know goes from the crowd to the core. We all take steps in our journey to Christ. But God calls us to take those steps. And along the way, as I pointed out last week, he calls us to make sacrifices in our journey. Now, I know it was a very, very practical message. If you missed it, you can go back and watch it on the church app or watch it online or on YouTube, whichever way you want to watch the, the message. But it was so simple, and yet so many people came to me and said, Pastor, that really helped me to take another step. And I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that we were able to help. So uh, we said along the way there, we said that God basically gives us three resources to help us to get in the game. Three resources that we manage throughout our lifetime. And what were those? They are these. Talent, time, and treasure. Those are the three resources that God gives to all of us. Talent, time, and treasure to get in the game and to manage our life. Today we're going to look at <clears throat> the very first resource, and that, that one is called talent. Now, I want us to stand today for the reading of God's Word. Matthew 25 and verse 13, we're going to read a passage of Scripture that is very familiar to most of us that are, I don't know, part of the congregation or part of the core, the committed. We've read this many times. Today I want you to see it with fresh eyes, and I believe it'll speak to you. Now, before we read it, as I always do, I like to put it in context, because you can't just read your Bible out of context. It has to have a context. Every text has a context, or you will misread it. So, in this particular text, Jesus is speaking of what? He is, he is speaking to his disciples. They just got through asking him a question. Lord, when will be the sign of your coming? Now, that's the context of the parable of the talents, the sign of the coming of the Lord. So in this passage, Jesus has told his disciples, you need to be ready for my second coming. Now, I know that when we talk about the second coming of the Lord or the rapture of the church, most of us, we think that that means go find us a bomb shelter to live in. I want you to know Jesus is going to tell us exactly the opposite. Nowhere in the scripture do you see where Jesus tells us as followers to go find a bunch of food and bury it in your basement and hang out in fear until I come again. It's not there. It's the opposite. He tells us you need to be doing some stuff. When I come again, I need, you, I need you, the church, to be doing some stuff, not hiding out in a shelter somewhere. Hello. I'll tell you something else he's speaking of here. Right before we read this, it's very, very important for you to understand. He is speaking of the kingdom of God. He's actually telling his disciples, this is how the kingdom of God operates. It's important to understand that. You see, the kingdom of God does not operate like our democratic culture. Newsflash. Because one is a theocracy. 
God ruled. The other is a democracy, people ruled. Watch this. The kingdom is dictated by a king. Democracy is ruled by the people. We have our opinions. We get to vote on everything. That's a democracy. But can I tell you something? That's why so many people in the church struggle with this book. Because you're trying to understand the kingdom through democratic eyes. I'm not talking about Republican or or Democrat. I'm talking about a democracy mentality. And I'm telling you, if you do that, you're going to misunderstand half of the parables Jesus is speaking about. So we struggle because we think that our opinion matters. Your opinion does not matter in the kingdom of God. (laughs) Oh, I need a ham and B3 today. We live like we can vote or veto on what this book says. (laughs) Right? But see, when the king says, this is the way it is in the kingdom, we only have one response, and it's yes and amen. So, with that in mind, let's look at Matthew 25. (laughs) Verse... That ain't no, this whistle ain't no good. There we go. All right. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. For it, what, what's it? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Now, Father, make this word so simple that a child can run with it. Help us to be doers of the word and not just mere hearers, deceiving ourselves. Help us to apply it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, I love this church. The year was 1902. The place was Rome, Georgia. Martha Berry had a vision to help children. So, she began a school for poor children. She had no books. She had no building. She had no money. All she had was a dream. She went to Henry Ford to ask him for a donation for this school. Mr. Ford reached into his pocket and gave Martha Berry a dime. Now, most people would have been insulted by that. A multimillionaire just simply giving a dime. But Martha wasn't offended. (laughs) You need to remember that. (laughs) Martha wasn't offended. In fact, she took that dime, she bought a packet of seeds, planted a garden, raised a crop, sold it, and bought more seeds. She did that three or four times. And after three or four harvest, she had enough money to purchase an old broken down building and she started a school for the children. Later, she returned to Mr. Ford and she said, look what your dime has done. Henry Ford was so impressed, true story, that he donated a million dollars to Barry School, which is now Barry College in Rome, Georgia. I'm here to tell you today 
your talent matters. Your dime, your talent matters. What you do with your talent, no matter how great or small, has a great significant influence on the kingdom of God and on someone's life. So the question we want to ask this morning is this, what will you do with your talent? Let let me push it another step further. What will you do with the life God has given you? That's what this parable is all about. Now, exegetically, certainly, Jesus is speaking to a crowd of people who would have understood the talent to be a day's wage or some type of monetary resource. That's true. But I also believe that the talent can represent a spiritual gift, a a, a talent, an ability that God has put within each of us. In fact, all three of those resources make up our life. Money, abilities, gifts, and talents. So here's the question. What will I do with the talent God has given me? There are three things that I can do with the talent God has given me. First of all, I can waste it. Secondly, I can spend it. Or thirdly, I can invest it. I can waste my talent or my life procrastinating about decisions that I know I need to make. I can waste my life pursuing stuff that I was never meant to chase. I can waste my life neglecting the God-given talent inside of me. Or I can spend it. I can spend it on my own selfishness, on my own interest. I can be slothful with it, be lazy with it and never fully reach my God-given potential. Or I can invest it. And that's the way of Jesus. That's the kingdom way. Jesus taught that the greatest use of life was not to waste it, not to spend it, but to invest it. That's what stewardship's all about, managing our lives well so that we have great impact on the kingdom. So I'm telling you today, your talent matters. Here's the main idea I want you to take home with you today, and it is this. I hope you'll write it down. Don't ever forget it. Investment of talent determines the return on your life. Investment of talent will determine the return on your life. Talent matters. Do you want to live a happy and fulfilled life? Talent matters. Do you want to have meaning and purpose in your life? Talent matters. Do you want to influence culture and impact the kingdom? Talent matters. Investment of talent determines the return on my life. So what do we want to do? We want to manage our lives, our talents wisely for greater impact in the kingdom of God. I have five short, very simple principles that I see in this passage that I simply want to pass along to you today. And they have everything to do with us being ready for the second coming of Christ, getting ready for the rapture of the church. We don't want to leave that out because that's part of the context. But there are five simple principles about stewardship and talents that we need to hear. Principle number one is simply this. 
All the stuff is his. Now, now that's easy. All right, let's go home. <laughs> it's that simple. All the stuff is his. Matthew 25, verse 14. Again, it, what's the it? The kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. Underline the word his. Whose property was it? Was it the servants or was it the man's? It was the man's. That's why talent matters. Talent matters because everything I have belongs to God. It belongs to the man. He's the creator. He owns it all. He created it all. All the stuff is his. It's a great story of the Methodist preacher John Wesley. It's a true story. John Wesley was away on one of his circuit rider preaching times. He was away from his house, and as he was gone, his house burnt down to the ground. And the people went out, and they finally found John Wesley, and they grabbed him, and they said, John, your house has been burnt to the ground. John Wesley said, that's impossible. No, John, listen to us. Your house is gone. It's been burnt to the ground, John Wesley said. Impossible. There's no way. They said, John, we saw it with our own eyes. Your house is burnt to the ground. John Wesley said, that's impossible. You see, I don't own a house. Everything I have belongs to God. I just manage the house for him. And if he doesn't put the fire out, that's his problem. He's going to have to find me another house to live in. Now, there's a man that understands everything is his. Everything we have belongs to God. Listen to me, friend. We came into this world with nothing. We're going to leave this world with nothing. Do you know in my 33 years of ministry, I have not one time done a funeral where the U-Haul trailer is attached to the hearse? No. Why is that? Because everything belongs to him. All the stuff is his. Say that with me. All the stuff is his. One more time. Come on. All the stuff is his. It's yours, Lord. That's the first principle. The second stewardship principle is this. All of us have some talent. You say, Pastor, can't you get a little deeper? No, because I would lose half of you. All of us have some talent. Talent. Notice I did not say some of us have all the talent. <laughs> well, yeah. See, there's not one person who has all the talents except for Christ. Look at verse 15. To one, he gave five talents. To another, two talents. To another, one talent. Each according to his ability. One translation says, each according to his capacity. Notice the amount differs, but not everyone gets the same. There's no such thing as a no-talent person in the kingdom. Everyone has a capacity or an ability for at least one talent. Here's what the Bible says, Romans 12 and verse 6. I love this passage. We have, it's talking about the body of Christ, we have different gifts according 
to the grace given us. Now, let's work that out for a second. When you were saved, you were graced. When you were graced, you were gifted. When you were gifted, you were empowered. When you were empowered, you were commissioned according to your ability. Listen, you can't let that go by you. When you were saved, when you came to Jesus, here's what happened to you. God put on you a measure of grace. That's what God did to you. When he saved you, he graced you. Then after he gave you that measure of grace, that grace along with it came a gift, a spiritual gift, something that was not there before you were saved. Can I tell you that before I was saved, I would have told you you were out of your mind. I almost said the word that... uh, that you were out of your mind if, I, if you told me I was ever going to be a teacher and stand before hundreds of people and teach the Word of God. Are you kidding me? But God, after he saved me, he graced me. After he graced me, he gave me a gift of teaching. Now watch this. After he saved you, he graced you. After he graced you, he gifted you. And then watch this. That gift that God put in you carries an anointing on your life. Simply an empowerment, an ability that comes only from God that you do not have by yourself. God saved me. He graced me. When he graced me, he gifted me. After he gifted me, he anointed me. He empowered me. And then what did he do? He commissioned me. He called me out based on what he knew my abilities would be. And everybody has different abilities and capacities to carry that gift. Are you following me? All of us have some talent or talents. I'm going to illustrate it. Uh, Tony, come on, stand with me. Dave, come on. Dave Weber. Jennifer, come help me with this. All of us have certain abilities or grace gifts that God has given to us based on what he knows about us and what he knows we can handle. Are you tracking with me, guys? I I hope I'm not losing anybody. Did I lose anybody online? (laughs) So let's let's just illustrate this. Uh, Now, you look like a man that can handle five talents. Should I give him five talents? Dave, I see in you the capacity to handle five giftings or five talents that are represented by these five $1 bills. So I'm going to gift you. I'm going to, based on your ability, I'm going to give you five talents or spiritual gifts. In fact, let's, let's make Dave real spiritual. <laughs> Dave, I'm going to put in your hands the gift of faith. How, how about tongues? How about interpretation of tongues? Let's get more spiritual. How about the gifts of healings and the workings of miracles? Woo! He's a spiritual man. He's got five giftings. This man can handle five giftings and talents. But you, I see in you, you have an ability in your life to handle two talents. Does that make you any worse than him? Absolutely not. It's the grace gifts that God has given you and the same abilities that Dave has. I want to give you two talents. 
What talents should I give you? How about the gift of leadership? How about, um, how about we make you, oh, you got the Zambia shirt on. How about we make you a missionary, a gift of the uh, apostolic gift, the gift of missions. And you. I see in you the ability to multiply one talent. I'm going to give you one of the greatest gifts that anybody could have within the local church. I want to give you the gift of helps. The gift of helps. Are you hearing me? You, you sound like you're not quite paying attention, like you're not here. Oh, yeah, you kind of, oh, I, 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 I just. So here's what I want you guys to do. I'm going to release you through the remainder of this message. And you know that'll be another hour, so no. (laughs) You've got a few minutes. I'm going to release you to go throughout this auditorium. Let's do this today. Let's raise some snack money, some snack cash for Zambia. So I'm going to release you, and here's what I want you to do, each one of you. I want you to multiply those talents, those dollar bills that I've given you. For you, I've given you one. That simply means you need to return with two. You, Dave, I've given you five talents. You need to come back with a minimum of ten. I believe in you. You've got the capacity to do it. You, I've given you two. I believe that you can multiply that by at least bring me back four. I believe you guys can do even better than that. So I'm going to release you. And I'm going to call you back. Don't come back until I call you, okay? And when I, you go throughout this whole audience, there's a lot of rich people here. (laughs) The bad thing is, is they don't carry cash. So just steal their credit card. (laughs) All right? You are released to go multiply your talent. All right, go do that. I'm going to keep preaching and, 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 and you are going to pay attention to the rest of the message. I love this church. Principle number three, a return is expected on the investment. Now look with me at uh, verse 19, I believe it is. Listen to what Jesus says. After a long time, come on now, I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels like a long, long time until somebody recognizes my talent. Anybody ever felt like that? That it's, you know, I've been rocking these babies in this nursery and ain't nobody appreciated my gifts and my talents. I got the gift of helps. Ain't nobody recognized my talent. Anybody ever felt like, you know, I've been out here in the blistering cold working in the parking lot and there's nobody recognizing my gift of service. After a long time, I've been working with these royal rangers and I'm about to pull my, the rest of my hair out that I have left because nobody's recognizing my talent. Whoa, but listen to what Jesus said. But after a long time, the master of the servants came back And he settled accounts with them. Here's the question. Listen to me. Here is the question every one of us in this house today for every one of us who have ever rocked a baby in the nursery. 
For every one of us who've been out in the parking lot parking cars, for every one of us that have worked with Royal Rangers or girls' ministry or children's ministry or youth ministry, for every one of us who have been in the sound crew or or been on the media team or been backstage or front stage, here's the question. When Jesus returns... Will he find a return? When Jesus returns, will he find a return? Why? A return is expected on the investment. Can I tell you that God has made such an investment in our lives? He has given us his son. He has given us his salvation. He's given us a new identity in Christ. He's given us his grace. He's given us his gifts. He's given us his power. And the Bible says that one day God is going to call for a divine audit of your life. He's going to settle accounts. And when he returns, he's going to ask the question, Where is my return? Where is my return on my investment? Where's my return on the talents I've given you, on the life that I've given you? When Jesus returns, will he find a return? That's an important question, and it demands a response from us. Because stewardship's all about accountability. A return is expected On the investment. Principle number four. I told you it's simple. Use it or lose it. This is the way the kingdom operates. Use it or lose it. Now, we're going to deal with the other two people that use their talents wisely in just a moment. I want to zero in just for a second on the lazy servant, the one who did nothing with his talent. Look at Matthew 25 and verse 28. Are you with me? Say amen. Amen. Jesus said, so take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given. For he will have more than enough. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. If I don't use it, I will lose it. Now listen to me. Tomorrow is tax day. (laughs) Woo! Talents are like tax deductions. If you don't use them, you will lose them. That's how the kingdom operates. Hear the words of Jesus. To him who has, more will be given. To him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, when I read that, I get mad because it does not seem right It does not seem fair. It doesn't in a democratic culture. In a socialistic culture, it's not fair. It's not right. But it is in the kingdom culture. Because listen to me, in the kingdom, watch, it's not about equal rights and fairness. It's about obedience and favor. Don't miss the principle. If you don't use it, you will lose it. So watch now. Here's the question. Pay close attention. Why? I have to, I have to ask, why did the one person who had one talent, why did he bury those talents? Here's what I believe. I believe he was motivated by mistrust and fear. He had the wrong perception of the master. Look with me, Matthew 24, 25. 
He who had received one talent came and he said, watch what he said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. You are a tough man to work for. Reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. Now watch what he says. I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. And then he goes, but look, you can have it back. Notice the wrong perception. He said, I knew you to be. The actual Greek reads like this. I perceived you to be a hard man. Listen to me. Your perception of God will lead you to trust him or mistrust him. Watch. I'm about to say something. Your capacity to multiply your gifts and talents, listen, is increased by your ability to trust God. Do you want to multiply your talent? Multiply your trust. Oh, that's good right there. Because when your perception of God is wrong, you will always operate in fear. And that's right where the devil wants you to operate. He says, I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Now I'm calling the servants to come back. Come on. I want to see the result of your talents. Listen to me, fear will cause you to bury your talent. Faith will cause you to multiply your talent. I'm calling our servants to come back. I want to see the result of your talent. Watch now. He's still collecting. <laughs> this dude's got it. The first man, by faith, he took five talents and multiplied it. You better have multiplied your talents. Let's see the result of your talents. You better have a whole lot more than a dollar twenty-five. Holy smokes. Look at that. Count that up. Count that up. Well done. I'm proud of you. Way to go. Money's still coming in. It's like a telethon. It's like a telethon in this house. I gave you two talents, servant. What did you do with the two talents that I gave you? Ooh. Very, very, he can't even get the talents out of his pocket. Are you kidding me? My, 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 my. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This, this, this dude's got the favor of God all over him. Look at it. I can't even hold on. I can't. Come help me with this, Kathy. I, I, I need a, a wheelbarrow. I mean, I... Count that up for me. Hold on. He's, this Zambia dude, man, he, he's raking in the cash right here. There's a credit card. And there's a credit card in there. Somebody gave you their credit card. There's some. I'm still working. You still working on it? Here's what I want to say to you. Tony? Well done. Great job. I gave you a little, and you multiplied a whole lot. Stay with me. Something tells me we're not going to have much luck here. But. So I gave you, I gave you 
one talent, and in fact, I gave you one of the most important gifts and talents that anyone could have in the local church, and that's the gift of helps. Tell me what you did to... You, you didn't... You didn't do anything. What? Why? What? You were afraid. Well, afraid of what? You were afraid that I would take your talent. So you just did nothing with it. You lazy, wicked. Se- security! Security! Come. The Bible doesn't say this, but I'm going to. Security! Security! Give me this thing. Get her out of here. <laughs> what? I don't mean that. Really, I don't mean that. <laughs> Look, you multiplied yours amazingly. I'm going to give you even more. You did a great job. I'm going to give you even more. Give these people a big God bless you today. We're about to wrap this thing up. Sometimes you need to see it rather than just hear it. Listen, the first man took five talents and multiplied it. The second person took two talents, multiplied it. The third person, they received one talent, and because of fear, they hid it and buried it. Two are operating in faith and multiplied it. One is operating in fear and loses their talent. Can I tell you something? The enemy would love to whisper in your ear and give you a wrong perception of God. And these are the things that the enemy whispers in our ear. The enemy says, you're not good enough. God rejects you. You're not talented enough. God can't use you. You don't have enough. God can't trust you. You're not worthy enough. God doesn't need you. You're not righteous enough. You can't be used. Those are all the lies of the enemy to keep you from getting in the game. And I'm here to tell you today, God wants to use you and you need to trust him so that you can multiply your talent. Yes. Now watch this. One real quick last principle. Talents invested are talents rewarded. We're, we're going to count this up, right? You're going to give me a number in a minute. Talents invested are talents rewarded. Let's go back to the other two servants. The one with the five comes to the master and says, Look, you gave me five I multiplied it, now I've got 10. And what does the master say? He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you a ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord, right? Then, he, then, then the one with the two talents says, look, you gave me two. I multiplied them, now I have four. And the, and, and the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've taken the little things that I've given you and you've used them. You've been faithful in them. Now enter into the joy of the Lord. I want to give you three rewards that we will get on the other side of of glory. When we get to heaven, we're going to get three rewards when we invest our talents. Here they are. Number one is affirmation from the Father. Don't you love that? Well done good and faithful servant. Some of you have never had an affirming word from your father all of your earthly life. Mm. But one day, we're going to hear the master, the Lord of glory, shout to us, you've done a good, good job. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Affirmation from the Father. Here's the second reward. Are you ready for this one? Promotion in the kingdom. Woo! He says, you've been faithful with the little things that I've given you. 
Now I'm going to make you ruler over many things. I'm going to promote you in the kingdom. I'm going to give you a greater responsibility. You're going to take part in this part of the kingdom. Listen, here's the part that we don't understand, friend. Right now, we are training for reigning. We are using our talents here for what will happen up there. <laughs> so some of us, we think, you know, you know, I am going to be in charge of commanding the angels. And you can't even control your mouth down here. You know, God, when I get to heaven, God is going to use me and I'm going to be the one to just kind of clean his throne off every day. You, you won't even set up chairs for a meeting. I know what I'm going to do. God's going to put me in charge of the pearly gates. You won't even stand outside that door and greet people when they come in. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't know what you think you're going to do. But listen, Jesus says, all I need you to do is be faithful with a few little things. Not a bunch of things, just a few. And if you'll be faithful with the little, I'll make you a ruler over much in my kingdom. Whoo, that's good news. That's the reward of heaven. Then he says one more celebration with the Lord he says enter in to the joy of the Lord that's gonna be an awesome day isn't it when we are finally able to put aside all of the work of the kingdom all of the sweat blood and tears of, of, of doing the work of God on earth and one day we're just able to, to be in the presence of Jesus throughout eternity and be able to celebrate all the souls that were saved and all the things that were accomplished on earth in the kingdom we're going to be in the presence of the Lord forever enter into the joy of the Lord Talents invested or talents rewarded. I just need you to know your dime matters. Don't think, don't think money for a moment. Your talent, I don't care if your talent is a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, a dollar, or a hundred dollar. Whatever your capacity is, your talent matters. So let's go back to the original question. What will you do with the gifts and the talents God has put on the inside of you? What, what will you do with the life God has invested in you? Stand with me all over this building and hold steady. We're going we're gonna to give a, a quick dismissal in just a moment, but I've got to lead to this question. See, I want, I want everybody to get in the game. Now, for some of you, getting in the game, your first step is just simply deciding to follow Jesus. It's that simple. Some of you just need to take one step and say, today is my day. I'm going to make up my mind. I'm going to follow Jesus. That's simple. You, you, you just need to come to the point where you quit struggling with the Lord. Some of you have been coming for a couple of weeks and you're here because you're part of the crowd and just kind of mixing in, but you've really never stepped out and said, now is my time to really let go and surrender to God. This is your day. Take that first step and surrender to Christ. You say, Pastor, that's me. I've never taken that first step, and I need to. Or maybe you have what we would say backslid, like you've taken a lot of steps back. Today, you just need to take another step forward. If that's you, right in the middle of this crowd, 
I'm going to ask you to slip up a hand so that I can pray for you. So on the count of three, here's how we do it. On the count of three, if you want to get right with God and you want to take that first step toward the Lord today, I'm telling you, he will run to you. If you're ready to take that first step today, I want you to just slip your hand up. Pastor, pray for me. I need to get some things right with God. Are you ready? One, two, three. Just hold your hand up high. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Come on. All the way in the back. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, too. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else. God bless you. Everybody look around. See who's coming to Jesus. God bless you and you and you and you and you and you. All the way back. God bless you. I just need to take one step. That's it. So here's what we're going to do. Right before I release you, I'm going to ask all of us to join together with these that have lifted their hands, and I'm going to lead us in a prayer I believe will change your life. Pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I'm tired of living for myself. I'm tired of my sin. So I repent, and I place my faith in the finished work of the cross. I trust Jesus for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to reach out in front of you, get a connect card. Well, guys, what an amazing sermon. I absolutely loved that skit. Um, and just for the record, that was a planned skit. Jen is not l- lazy and scared. <laughs> um, but what a phenomenal word this morning. Um, so wherever you are at, no matter where you are in the church or if you are new, we hope this encourages you. Uh, to actually get in the game, no matter if you are part of the community, crowd, congregation, if you're committed, strive for that core, Um, take that next step to following Jesus, and get in the game. Just take that step. So Pastor Dave did a phenomenal job today speaking about talent, and I think the biggest takeaway for me was when he said, when Jesus returns, what is, is his return? I think that's the biggest thing that we need to just just check ourselves every day while we're out at the store, while we're out at work, while we are with our friends on the weekends, what is his return? So put that into focus this week. Um, No matter where you are, take this message outside of the church's four walls and just really encourage someone. Share this message with someone uh, this week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, We really hope that this word empowers you, really empowers you uh, this week um, to get in the game, um, find your step wherever you are at in this church. Um, Downstairs in the lobby, we will be having um, just resources available. And also throughout the week, feel free to head over to newlifepoland.com to get in the game. Find your spot. We have tons of events that are happening here at the church and as well outside of the country we have our zambia trip that is happening they will be leaving soon and will be coming back on the 21st or 25th so please be sure to keep them in prayer guys if you need baptisms water baptism to make that next step it's going to be on the 21st so guys we absolutely pray that that um, pastor dave's word encouraged you hopefully you're able to encourage someone outside of these four walls again this week have a great week and guys we will see you next sunday at 10 a.m